Cap theorem has really <laughs> done things to us when it comes to databases that uh, have changed the way we think about databases. Back in the day, we just had you know typical relational databases, things like MySQL, Postgres, and I like to kind of think it's what Einstein came and did to Newton. It just gave us a new way to think about things and kind of made it a far weirder world. And with this new, with these new databases, with these non-relational databases, there's just so many of them and so many ways to use them. And people, you know, for a while, is trying to map one concept to the other, um, try to come up with a way to use the data in the way that, the format they have it now in a completely different way and express it. And you really got to ask yourself, who are we going to screw? Are we going to screw the developer? Are we going to screw the user? You know, how are we going to scale this thing? Um, some of you are looking at the slides. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so consistency, you know, without it, programmers have to get pretty weird. You start to, you know, build a system, and it, the programmer has different needs than the user does, right? When the, when the programmer is building something, they can handle, you know, really horrible error messages that make sense to them. They can handle connection timeouts. They can think about that. But, you know, without availability, um, you know, things are pretty, but the users get left out in the cold. So even though a developer is willing to accept these things, your end user really isn't. And when we think about you know, fault tolerance, without it, eh, your horizons are pretty limited. And albeit this is a pretty unfortunate slide based on things that's happened recently. But uh, moving right along. Um, so when we're building the system, we're trying to you know, think of eventual consistency as really a strain on optimism. So most of the data, graph databases and non-relational uh, databases that are out there now kind of go with this, uh, you know, ev eventual consistency model, which in theory sounds really great, but you know it has its limits. So we, with our graph database, try to think about things like, you know, eventual concurrency. So we negotiate a point of view when you use the system, and everyone has a unique point of view. So there's really lots of different universes at play here. Each individual point of view is a different universe. And we only have to care about what we show you in your universe, in your point of view, and trust that behind the scenes, you know, automatically things are going to come together. Um, the universe is going to communicate behind the scenes. Everything's going to come together. Everything you thought you knew, you still know. But, you know, other people's information and their other point of views basically come, you know, up to speed and fill in the blanks of things that you didn't know. And what's nice about this is it kind of happens when no one's looking because you have no way to peer behind and see the other person's point of view. You just automatically have new data. Um, so we're kind of limiting you of availability with our uh, you know, eventual concurrency model. But, and we kind of cheat cap theorem, um, but not really, right? And the, the lag that you have when they're kind of putting things together is maybe two milliseconds at best, and, you know, most people can kind of handle that. So, you know, CAP still wins, but we can at least hide the unsightly truth. Um, and so we do, <laughs> we do have wait. I was waiting for people to laugh at the slide. I thought it was pretty funny, and you guys are like, I just want to drink wine. <laughs> Will this guy shut up? Um, so, you know, we happen to have such a database. With well, really Atomics, you know, our database is called Aurelia. And if you guys are wondering why we picked that name, it's because I like memes. I think they're great. Like our big sharded solution that we've been building behind the scenes is called Ermagerd. So if you kind of get the, the gist. So one of the ways that we do this, we're all C++ using the latest and greatest C++14, which you know we hate ourselves, so that's why we do that. Um, and when you write in our script, it's a really script. And it's kind of like Python. So if you know Python, you should grok it. But then you'll think, like, what? this doesn't seem quite right. But then once you kind of you know read the language tutorial, get to know it a bit, you'll feel better. And everything that you run in the script gets compiled, loaded on the server. And when you're running on the small version of the server, just on like a, a vagrant VM or whatever, you're, you can trust that whatever you get working there will kind of automatically work on the big enterprise system that can serve the whole planet. So you know, we're mostly a graph, because that's what we're going after. But we also play well with others. So if you wanted to use our database just to you know, as a tuple store, as a replacement for memcache, like you can totally do that. And in our kind of synthetic benchmarking, things are pretty fast, like three times faster than MySQL. Thanks. <laughs>